Everybody loves a baby, that's why I'm in love with you. Pretty baby, pretty baby. And I'd like to be your sister, brother, dad, and mother too. Pretty baby, pretty baby. Won't you come and let me rock you in my cradle of love? We'll cuddle all the time. Oh, I want a loving baby, and it might as well be you. Pretty baby of mine. Hello, and welcome to the Flying Show. My name is Carlos, and today we've Gone back to Werribee where it all started for us at the Flying Show at the home of the B24 Liberator Restoration Project and today we're going to have a listen to this magnificent engine behind me here and to tell us a little bit about that is Tony Mueller. Tony Mueller, the other engineer and welcome to the Flying Show. How are you? I'm well, thank you. That's great. Now Tony, um, we met a, a few years ago but uh, we never really talked a lot about this beautiful engine behind us, mate. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Well, it's a wonder because I'm normally always talking about it. But this engine is uh, one of the original engines off the B24. Uh, the plane itself has four of them. They're 1,200 horsepower Pratt & Whitney engines, 14 cylinders. They've got a capacity of 1830 cubic inches, which in later terms is probably 16 Toyota Corolla engines. They were widely produced right around the world. Most countries produced them. Australia produced them up in Sydney. But they fitted a lot of aeroplanes, and our aeroplane needed these type of engines because it, the B-24 Liberator was chosen from all the other ones that were available, the B-17 or the Lancaster, for its range and its ability to carry a huge range, a huge amount of bombs. Now the bomb capacity was uh, 12,000, up to 12,000 pound, which was more than a, a B-17, but it needed strong engines to get it up off the ground. The motor itself is very reliable. It started life as a seven-cylinder. Pratt & Whitney were a firm in America that made precision instruments. In fact, they were the, recognised as the world standard in instrumentation. And a guy came to them with this plan for a seven-cylinder radial engine, which right the other opposition to, Pratt, uh, to engine manufacturers had, uh, wouldn't accept his design, so he went to Pratt & Whitney. They'd never made uh, engines at all, but they decided they would do this. They built the seven-cylinder engines according to his instructions, and it was so successful that it moved on then to a nine-cylinder and to this, a 14-cylinder, and up to 48 cylinders in the end. So they were a unique motor, very reliable, and quite fuel, uh, very fuel Efficient, I guess. Efficient, yeah. that's the word. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. old people lose these yeah. words. But when we say fuel efficient, we're talking about, what, 40 gallons at uh, Yeah, on the, on the step, they flew with about a five-degree nose-down attitude. Uh, to get up off the ground, of course, they had 2,700 revs, and at that they'd use up to 100 gallons of fuel per hour each engine. But once they got into the sky and uh, cruising... They would cruise at about 1,800 to 2,200 revs, and that would be somewhere between 35 and 45 gallons an hour. Average would be about 40 gallons an hour. Because it had 3,000 gallons of fuel in the wing, that gave it a huge range of 4,600 kilometres. What a magnificent engine. Absolutely. Now, how many were made, do you reckon? Of the engines, uh, well... Pratt Whitney themselves made 173,000, but they also allowed people to make them under licence, and the figures then get rubbery because Russia made them, but never paid any duty on them, so they have no idea how many. I believe there's still a few kicking around in South America. But we made them here in Blacktown in New South Wales. Canada made them. Uh, so the figures got rubbery, but they were well over 200,000. They had a, an hour life of 1,600 hours, uh, and if you average that out at 180 to 200 mile an hour, it's quite a distance. And then it was only a strip down and inspection. The spark plugs had to be changed every 100 hours. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, tell us a little bit about this particular motor that you've got, or engine that you've got here. Uh, where did it come from and how long have you had it for? Well, we prefer not to talk about where these motors come from. Uh, there's the old story about falling off the back of a truck. <laughs> Uh, motors were purloined 
is the word. <laughs> but the original motor was made up. We were tasked, my brother and I were asked to get a running engine f uh, f just so that we could show people what an engine sounded like when it was running. Yeah. And we had a lot of spare parts here and no idea about these motors. We were both in the motor trade. He was a, in the, had his own panel shop and I, I worked for British Leyland. So we had a, a fundamental idea of engines but not radials. So mm -hmm. we gradually got spare parts and put it together. We called it the Bitzer engine yeah. and no one got a bigger fright than me when it actually started. That is amazing. It was a great day. We were, there yeah. was cheering and clapping actually. That is amazing. Well done. Now, any reason, where did the propeller come from? Uh, any reason for this particular propeller and this engine? Well, that propeller is called a club propeller mm. and it's used for testing purposes. It's normally it's used in a wind tunnel, but uh, obviously we haven't got a tunnel here, mm. but it's used for cooling. It's not used for flying at all. And that particular prop came from a guy called Bob Eastgate. Now, Bob flies a Mustang. Um, currently, it's being reworked. But uh, he was down at Point uh, uh, Leverton? No, Point, uh, Cook. Point Cook. And I went down to see him uh, about another matter. And I happened to notice that he had two of these props. And I sort of half guessed. And I said, What are they? And he said, Oh, they're off 1830s for testing and right cyclones. The same, oh, wow. They use the same one on right cyclones, which is a nine cylinder, very common. Uh, engine as well wow. and he said why do you want one and I said yes yeah. so there it is <laughs> that was easy yeah sensational to get it running you've actually got to spray a bit of fuel into the um, supercharger. the supercharger yeah, yeah well it, the carburetor itself is designed so the motor can be in a airplane that flies upside down you can only fly a B24 upside down once yeah, and that's it. But, uh, but they were in the boomerang as well, weren't they? Yeah, they were in a boomerang. They were in, in a lot of aeroplanes, yeah, 27 yeah. different aeroplanes during, yeah, yeah. during its time when it was in vogue. So to start the motor, you have to put raw fuel into the supercharger, which is underneath the carburetor. It has vanes, which then throw it up inside into the cylinders. The cylinders then catch fire and when it starts firing, you get a depression in the manifold. This vacuum works on the uh, on the interior of the carburetor and gets all these things working, different jets for height and whatever. And once it runs, it runs quite smoothly. Mm, that is fantastic. Hopefully. Mate. Yeah, we'll keep our fingers crossed. And Tony, we'll let you go and get set up and uh, look forward to hearing it, mate. Okay. Thank you so much for being yeah. on The Flying Show again. Thank you. My pleasure.
Oh, you got four of those in your beer. And that, that's not four revs. 2,700 revs on takeoff. It went up to 2,000 then in the last run. We can't go any higher than jump the chocks. It's trying to get away as it is. One day I'm going to face it down that paddock and stand on the back and let it go. <laughs>